Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Rob Howard, RJH Motorway Training. Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2022. Good evening. How are we all doing? So, spring is teasing us. Spring is teasing us. Lovely weekend. Monday, Tuesday, poor again. Uh, lovely weekend, Monday, Tuesday, poor, but there we are. Why do we live in the UK? So, good evening, everybody. RJH live stream, Wednesday, 2nd of March, 2022, 8 p.m. Let's go. Uh, tonight is all about module two. So, module two, if you're getting your full bike license, you're going to have to do mod two. Uh, CBT Theory Mod 1, Mod 2 is the final part of the process to get your full license, so it's going to be a juicy one, it's going to be a good one, it's going to be a long one. Possibly two hours. Uh, but let's get that chat room too hot to handle, so anybody has got Mod 2 coming up, anybody's thinking of learning to ride a bike, it's all useful stuff. Anybody wants to improve the riding, it's all useful stuff. It's all free. Uh, but before we get on to that, we will go through the traditional um, congrats and so on and so on. Um, and so let's think about congratulating everybody up and down the country that have been messaging me on the YouTube channel that they have found the videos useful in them achieving their goals, whether that be tasters, CBTs. Uh, module 1 and Module 2, it really is um, humbling for me, knowing that we're helping people up and down the country. So, it's all good stuff. Thanks for letting me know. Um, also, congratulations go out to Team RJH, who have been working hard behind the scenes. We've launched, opened RJH Runcorn. So Runcorn is now open. RJH has four sites. Manchester, Northwich, Wigan. Runcorn is a new one. So congrats to everybody there. All the hard work behind the scenes getting that prepared. Sophie is a new manager. So well done to her. She will probably be on a little bit later. Um, but first, yeah, a couple of days. And we've got the opening weekend at the weekend. So anybody who wants to come along. Have a free go on a bike. Come on over to RJ's Run Corner at the weekend on the Heath. Going to be good. So, yeah, congrats to Sophie and RJH Run Corner. Um, also, um, CBT competition. Um, as as per um, 100, 100 people watching the live stream at the same time, I will open up a competition, give away free CBT worth £199. So, come on. Let's get this chat room too hot to handle. The more you chat in the chat room, the more you like the video and so on, it spreads it tonight, get more people watching. And record is 62, so we have had 62 people watching the YouTube at the same time. Now we uh, want to get to 100. I will then offer a free CBT to a lucky winner. So let's go on, get that chit chat. I want it steaming at all four corners of the box. Let's get that chat room too hot to handle. Um, so that's that. So yeah, it's it's all good. It is all good. Let's have a quick look then before we go on into the chat room, see what we've got going on. If anybody wants to leave a review, please don't be shy. Um, we have uh, four Google review um, opportunities for you. Um, and you know, I just Manchester, I just Wigan, I just Northwich, I just Runcorn. Don't be shy to leave us a Google route. It really, really does make a difference. I can't tell you what a difference it makes. Small businesses like yourself, um, and you know, it does make a big difference, which is why we keep going on about it. But so, uh, good evening to you, James. Um, welcome to the live stream. Giuseppe Music, good evening. You passed with no minors in December 2021. Good for you. 
yeah, live discussions. It's all about you get out of it what you put in. So get that chat room, get asking questions. And, you know, there's a lot of advice, not just me, but everybody in the chat room has got a lot of experience they can pass on. Um, good evening to Herbie Hamilton. Good evening, Lisa. Wasn't expecting to see you on the live stream this evening. Well, no, only just got in. Just got in. Have me tea. Boom. In. Boom. Wham, bam. I'm here. Live stream. Liam, good evening to you. James Castle's got his Mod 1 and Mod 2 tomorrow. Good luck to you, James. And keep us posted. Let us know how you go on. Um, I'm sure you will be... Good. Um, good evening to Sylvia. Times this week, nine o'clock. We should be there, Liam. Nine Sunday, nine nine on Saturday, nine on Sunday. Busy weekend. CBTs in Runcorn. First weekend. Bam. There we are. Busy, busy, busy. Uh. Giuseppe, so nine o'clock, Liam, come and say hello. Um, Giuseppe Music, can't thank you enough. Very helpful with your videos. Great to hear. That is what they are for. Um, I don't do it for any other reason than helping all of my trainees out in uh, across the sites, but also for all of you ladies and gents up and down the country. Oh, good evening to you, Dave Ashworth. Nice of you to join us. Nice of you to join us. So let's have a look then. Got nice and cakes. Absolutely, Liam. Come and say hello, mate. Um, we've got a free CBT competition over the weekend for anybody with the cleanest bike. Cleanest bike competition. We'll take some photos. And um, the plan is that we are going to give away a free CBT. That's what we want to do. We want to give away a free CBT. Yeah, the weather has been around. The weekend, Sunday was lovely, James. Sunday was very, very nice, but then it turned Monday, Tuesday again. Um, so, don't know why, but don't know why we uh, got another teasing us. The teasing us. I've got another dislike on this chat. It's that same person that comes on and dislikes us. Don't be shy. Let love to know who it is. And you need to let me know what you don't like about the video so that I can improve. So don't just give us a dislike. Tell us in the chat room why you've given me a dislike. I welcome you to tell me what you don't like about the video so I can improve it. There you go. There's the there's a uh, an opportunity. Um, so cleanest bike, twenty one year old. Yeah, don't matter, Liam. Age does not matter. Age does not matter. So let's think about. I think I've got a stalker. Did it last live stream? Stalker dislikes me within about five minutes on here. Be the same person. I welcome you to let me know. Pop along to our open weekend. RJ's run call this weekend. Clean Spike will win a free CBT. Yes, they will. But it's good to get, it's good to meet a lot of people on it. It'd be good to meet you. It will be good to meet you. Um, so we're going to get straight into mod two then. So mod two, um, and basically I sort of got a load of videos underneath in the, um, description below, a lot of video, a lot of videos in the description below. 
to really couple what um, we're discussing here. Um, Toby, good evening to you. Um, your vids massively helped, massively helped me pass space in the south. Couldn't do it. I'm doing a bike safe with the police at the end of the month. Enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy it. They'll um, they'll they'll introduce you to different things that you would have done on your practical test, but enjoy it. Take it on board. Enjoy it. A um, lot of bike safes up and down the country. Very, very, very well received. So you will have a good session. Um, Giuseppe brought an ER6N after watching the reviews. Yeah, fantastic first bike. Fantastic. Yeah, Keyboard Warriors Lisa will be either a keyboard what I think it may be a competitor. Somebody that is... Uh, it'll be the same person. It'll be the same person every week. Uh, straight in there with a dislike. Yeah, no, this new highway code rules again. It's all very early days and there is a sort of blending in period. Um, not a lot of difference. I don't think really it's um, not causing too much problems at all. Um, got two dislikes now, so somebody's really going for it um, on the live stream. But yeah, when the weather improves, AWA, I will be doing a um, video on the new highway code rules um, and how it sort of blends into how we're teaching on the roads. Uh, that'd be great help for that review video you made on. Yep, so all of Bike Fleet generally doing another one, MT07s. We're doing all, all of them have a review. So there is a channel, there is a, um, a live stream um, playlist of bikes that they that we use um, in the school. Yep, so they are good. And it is a fact. I mean, my, my first bike I rode when I was a lad was a Honda. And I ride a Honda today. So people do, um, you know, people do tend to become loyal to a brand. So if you learn on a Kawasaki ER6, there's going to be a very good chance that you will go and buy a, a Kawasaki ER6N. Yeah. So it's a very good chance that you will. And that's what tends to happen. So if you learn on a Honda CB650, there's a very good chance you'll go and buy a Honda CB650. Um, Dave Ashworth. Uh, oh, good evening to you, Sophie. Sophie is joined us. Sophie is in the house. Um, A.K.A. Chick N Lines. Um... Dave mentioned your name at JNS. They gave me a tenner. Yeah, let JNS know. So we recommend JNS is our first port of call. We will always recommend trainees to J and S. Biggest selection of bike gear you will find. SV650, yep, so you learn on an SV650 before a Kawasaki ER6N, we use both, yeah, and we use the, before the ER6N, we use the ER500, after the ER6N, we use the Z650, yep, so they're all that mid-range. Um, let's get back to topic then, which is all about discussing module two. For those of you that have started the journey, those of you that are part of the way through, and indeed there's a lot of you in the chat room, um, and there are 17 of you. There are a lot of you in the chat room that um, will be very happy to pass on your experience to those that are watching. So very, very good. Uh, mod 2. Let's talk about then Mod 2. Final part. Um, I'm going to use tonight the DL196, which I've got a copy of. Now, what tends to happen now is examiners use a iPad. So, and then you get your report basically by email pretty much as soon as you've finished. 
So I'm going to use the um, riding test report, which is the DL1. Um, did I say DL196? That's a CBT certificate. This one is a DL25. Riding test report. So it's basically the same that you get on an email through the iPad. This is what there was using maybe a year or two ago, and they'd fill it in at the end, and you get one of these. Um, a riding test report. So we're going to go through all of this. And by the end of it, you've got a bit of an idea about what you're wanting. And yep, so um, final part of your module, uh, of your route, CBT theory test, module one, module two. And you can be doing your A1, A2 or category A, depending on your age. Um, so first off, um, I've got a link below of the motorcycle riding test report DL1 2 DL25. So you can actually get one of these up on your screen if you so wish. And it's sort of headed all the headings and at the back of it is a bit of an explanation on each subject. So we're going to go through all of those. Talk about faults as well in a moment. Giuseppe. Um, so... The format of the module two, basically then it's a 40 minute road ride and you uh, can accumulate um, 10 rider faults and you can um, not accumulate any serious or dangerous faults okay so if you <coughs> accumulate one of a serious if you accumulate one of a dangerous you will be unsuccessful so don't get one of those however you're allowed to accumulate 10 rider faults and you can still pass. Although 10 rider faults is quite a messy ride. Uh, we're getting people that are passing generally under under five under six digits. So three, four, five, they're good results. One or two fantastic results. You can get no faults, as Gillespie said. You can get no faults, and no faults would be amazing um so any of you that have got no faults pat yourself on the back because uh, pat yourself on the back because you don't get too many like that we do but generally don't because you know we like to think we're a bit better than most anyway be another dislike for that um underneath so we've got um, the motorcycle riding test report. Um, yeah, 40 minutes, 10 faults passed, one serious, one dangerous fail. Um, 40 minutes is broken up into um, your meteor examiner. You get all formalities, and we'll go on to that in a minute. Um, then you get kitted up with a radio, um, out to the bike, you get an eyesight check, show me, tell me questions, we'll go on to those in a minute. Um, and then onto the road. You do a bit of independent riding on the road where you just follow the signs for so-and-so, but it's all very clear what you're doing there. And you might get moving off exercise behind a parked car. You might get a moving off exercise on a gradient and you might get a moving off exercise um, on, a, on a hill, on a gradient, yeah. Or just generally um, moving off. So uh, about 40 minutes, come back, bit of a radio debrief at the end. Um, yes. Well done, you've passed. No, sorry, you haven't had an explanation. And what can happen when you've passed and what you do with your licence, we're going through that as well. So, first of all then, um, writing test report. So, it's our job as instructors to get you to the test centre on time. So, we will get you to the test centre on time. Um, maybe 10, 15 minutes earlier, so you can use the facilities, maybe have a cup of coffee if it's cold or whatnot, but just then a bit of a chit-chat with your instructor, get you in the zone. Um, we as a school take all of your documents at base, so we look after all your documents and present you and your documents to the examiner at the time of your test. 
Um, just one less thing for you to be worrying about. So remember, preparation is key. Make sure you get to your training centre on time. Make sure you get to the training centre and you have all of your documents. Okay, very, very important. So let's uh, say we've got to the test centre. We use eight different, sorry, ten different test centres across the northwest. Now we've got the four schools, ten different test centres across the um, across the region and um, you know we could be an hour and a quarter ride to the test centre so you're nice and warmed up you've been on the got some saddle time in um, but we get you to the test centre on time with the right documents wearing the right gear um, and that's all in the description below about what you need to wear also on your test okay so a bit of preparation on your part and um, we will get you there on time let's just have another little look in the chat room uh aw8 the stock on trent at least in simpson chicken lines used to have a ninja 250 and an er6 f kawasaki is an easy to ride yep easy to ride Kawasaki's are, yeah, nice bike. Just listen to RJH and Rob and all the videos and connect to the discussions and you'll pass in no time. Yeah, well, listen, it's not just me. It's all you, ladies and gents, in that chat room, which can pass on all of your experience. It's invaluable and it is all free. You know, we don't charge for this. All we are putting in is our time um, and your reviews and your... Um, Feedback in the chat room is 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 enough for us. Um, if you're watching, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Liam. Giuseppe, no minors for me, partly thanks to yeah. Great, no minors. That is a good result. That is a good result. Um, feel, feel free to pop over to my channel, J D Key. Yeah, absolutely, Liam. Where's uh, your channel, mate? Let's have a link. We promote um, Sophie's channel. Yeah, we promote Sophie's channel. We you know, help each other out. Um, never stop watching the channel. Great, that's what we like. Um, counter intelligence is wheeling on a motor. Is wheeling. Hold on a minute. Is wheeling, is that wheeling or wheeling? My current evening checklist, drink on the table, vape to hand, Baywatch on mute, I am book nearby, hang on, it's like, oh, no. fantastic AWA, that's what we like, that's a good, even by way, anyway, can you say that do you mean wheeling as in pushing or wheeling? Yep, well done, uh, wheeling, Dave, perfect preparation, yeah, that's a five P's, that's a military thing, Dave. We use that very often. I suspect you know the answer. If not, probably should. Any thoughts on the bike safe courses? Just put one doing it Sunday. Somebody asked, Michaelo, good evening to you. Um, somebody else um, a little bit earlier on in the chat rooms booked um, bike safe. So you'll have something in common. Very worthwhile. Very, very worthwhile. Yeah, so um, all any advice I can give to you on a bike safe is to enjoy it. All about enjoying it. <laughs> so let's get back to the DL25. Um, what you need to wear for your test, well, you know what you need to wear for a mod two. You've done a module one, so it's much the same as that. Wear the appropriate gear. Documentation, where well, you've taken the documentation to the module one, well, all you need to do is take exactly the same as what you've done to the module one, but also take your module one certificate. You can't do the module one uh, two tests without the module one pass certificate. Oh, yeah, get there on time. Uh, the format is much the same, meeting the examiner, signing the declaration. Um, you'll have a bit of a chit-chat to you, a bit more of a chit-chat on a module too. Just explain what he wants you to do on the roads. Try and get you relaxed at this point. They are human. They will try and get you in the zone. And what they try and do, just get you to ride for yourself, just like you've been doing on lessons. Don't worry about them. 
uh, ride for yourself, ride, make your own decisions and just get on with it. And they do encourage you for that. But ride for yourself, make your own decisions and get on with it. They encourage it. Okay. Um, the more relaxed you are, the better you're going to ride. And I know it's hard to get relaxed, but anyway, um, try and relax and you'll be fine. Kits you out with their radio. Different test centres are different. Some like you to use their own earpieces. Some are happy for using their earpieces now. Um, most still want you to wear face covering or neck tube, this sort of thing. So, But it is easy enough, but it's still, yep. Yeah, so some like you to use your own pen. Others, you're happy to use their pen. So just depending on which test centre you use, you've got different rules. Um, kits you out their radio. Um, yeah, visually looks at what you're wearing. If you sign the declaration, he will ask you then to lead the way out. Probably ask you what you like to be called. Is so Rob, Robert, whatever, whatever you want to be called. Claire. Uh, first thing he's going to do is take you out and read a number plate. So make sure you can read a number plate between uh, from twenty point five meters max. And if you don't read a number plate, then you're going to have problems, aren't you? If you can't do your number plate check, then you're going to be unsuccessful on your test. Uh, so make sure you can read a number plate, and then he'll ask you to move over to the bike, take him over to your bike. Reads, um, makes a note of your registration, visually looks around your bike, make sure he's happy, and then um, straight into the question. So you will get two questions on um, show me, tell me. You get one uh, question on show me, one question on tell me. Link below so you can have a look at those. You don't need to be a mechanic, it is basic stuff. You'll also be asked one question on carrying a pillion passenger. So again, link down below in the description. Make sure that you have a look at that. Um, if you don't answer any of those satisfactorily, you can get a minor fault. So, you know, start off well. Start with that good impression and you will be fine. OK, so two questions. Um, one, show me. One, tell me. And one question on carrying a pillion passenger. Um, done that. On the bike. Make sure the radio's okay. And away you go. All right. Now, I've got a very interesting video down below about, and it's titled, The First Five Minutes and the Last Five Minutes of Your Test. So we've been delivering people for tests for 20 years, and... You know, there's a very high, high percentage of people that will struggle in the first five minutes or the last five minutes. And this video down below explains why, whether it be nerves um, or, you know, towards the end, concentration's gone. So and there's little tips about how can you how you can make yourself, you know, sharp and focused. Simple things like, you know, get a good night's sleep hard to if you've got this test coming up but get a good night's sleep make sure you've drunk plenty of water you're hydrated make sure you've had some food whether it's breakfast or if it's a test in the afternoon some dinner you know because your brain needs food you need to be hydrated um, you know car, a car won't perform very well if it's not got water in the radiator well think of your body it needs water in it um, to perform well, doesn't it? You need to be hydrated. So some top tips in there. Um, be prepared, um, you know, so things like that will help you. So the first five minutes and the last five minutes of your test. Um, remember, um, when you do go out, um, he will, uh, well, your test has started. So remember when you're leaving the car park, there might be other learners in the car park, might in there. You can't just go bullying your way out or when you're coming back in. So take into account other people in the car park. Show your examiner that you're planning. You've identified them, you're planning, and you're considerate and this sort of thing. So a good attitude from the start is important, okay? Um, and... And that's where we're up to. We're almost ready to leave the car park. So let's have another look then in the chat room. Uh, good evening, Wolf Gaming UK. Yeah. 
think the police class it is not being in control of the vehicle to think. Yeah, okay, good. Well done. So a bit going on in there. Can we get it where it's too hot to handle? Uh, remember that competition is a free CBT if we get to 100 people watching the video at the same time. That is an ongoing um, incentive, so keep coming away, keep sharing, and keep talking. Keep talking, that's the important thing. We do like you to keep talking in that chat room. Very, very important. Um, so we're pretty much then out. Your examiner will explain. If you don't hear any instructions, you just need to follow the road straight ahead. Unless traffic signs tell you otherwise. So look out for those you know, no entries or one way roads, stuff like that. So you need to go straight on. Um, if you don't hear anything, just keep going straight on. And he will ask you to turn left and right in plenty of notice. So they're not going to spring these instructions on you at the last minute. They will give you plenty of time in order that you can plan. It's very important you can plan. Um, treat him as a SAT navigation system. That's what the best thing to do is. Um, so let's think. You need to maintain what you've learned on module one. So how you move off and stop, control position, how you use your brakes in a straight line, how you ride slowly, where you're looking, your observations before setting off, all those things you work really, really hard on. On your module one, make sure that you continue with that on your module two. Okay, you can't just forget about all that, so remember it and carry on going. That standard is very, very important. Um, so, I think the first thing there for after, if you look at the Mod 1 control of the bike, which you'll all be looking at all of that, but now you've, you've really got to show him how you can mix all that in with everything that's going on the road. So your module two test, yep, maintaining the standard, but now you're mixing in and showing them you're safe on the road with other road users. So let's think about um, number 13, which is rear observations, okay? Um, and it's rear observations, and I have got a great video um, down below about rear observations explained and demonstrated by me. Um, you know, your mirrors, your shoulders, um, when you should do those ob observations and why you should do the timing and so on. Mirrors indirect, lifesavers direct. Mirrors nice and regularly, we recommend about 8 to 10 seconds. Mirrors before you signal. Mirrors before you use your brakes to slow down. Mirrors before you change road position. It's always before, just a split second before, so that you've got the benefit of being to a, being able to act on what you see. Um, and lifesavers, checking your blind spots, your direct rear observation. So moving off from the side of the road, moving off from a standstill, changing lanes, overtaking, um, turning right at a junction, exiting roundabouts. These are all really important blind spot checks. And again, the timings need to be before you've committed. So you are able to act on what you see. How quickly a, an observation should take you would be a split second because of the distance that you are traveling. And you travel at one and a half times your speed in feet per second. So a second is too long. A split second is sufficient for you to identify and act a split second. Very, very important. 
Um, that's number 13. If you, if you accumulate a rider fault, what we call a minor fault, rider fault, if you accumulate more, if you accumulate three of the same subject, it doesn't necessarily go into a serious fault. We have had pupils accumulate three minor faults, rider faults, and still pass the test. So I think I think at the discretion of the examiner, looking at the whole ride, that's up to them. But just because you get three minor faults or rider faults doesn't doesn't automatically say you have failed. But you're not going to know that going along anyway. But at the end on the reports, um, but yeah, what you ideally you don't want the same mistake. Um, repetitively, because it could be considered a pattern of development that you need. Um, but yeah, um, minor fault, three of the same, isn't necessarily serious or dangerous. Um, number 13, number 14 signals. So let's just go, actually, let's go to 13, the, the rear observations. You can have a look at the video down below in the description, but the... the uh, the description of rear observation on the DL25, so this is the official yeah, DL25, the ride and test report. So number 13, rear observations. You should use the mirrors fitted to your machine safely and effectively. Where mirrors were not sufficient, for example, to cover blind spots, then you must take rear observation, your lifesaver. You should have always checked carefully before signalling, change in direction or change in speed. You should have shown you can use the OSM PSL routine effectively. So that's what they're looking for. That's a description that is available on the back. The link is below so you can look at this. You can play back the video. You can look at this on the D, um, DS, DVSA website. There's nothing hidden. Everything there is available. So... Um, so that's very important. Um, signals. So we've got signals necessary, signals correctly, and signals timed. One of the biggest problems with signals, that's your indicators on your test, one of the biggest problems is leaving them on. And I have a fantastic video, which I did, down below, and it's headed... Um, find it right it's headed top tips to ensure you cancel your indicators so I've I've used a system from being a car instructor introduced it into the bikes so I was a bike instructor before a car instructor so I did bikes then got into cars as well as bikes and now I don't do cars I just do bikes but um, there is a system that I used in the car and I brought that into the bikes and it will help you make sure you turn your indicators off. Of course, if you leave your indicators on and your examiner tells you to turn it off, that could cause you a problem on your test. So you don't really want that at all. But signaling is necessary correctly in time. So just go through a description of signals, number 14, and then we'll go back into the chat room. So I see it's getting a bit busy in the chat room again. Um, signals, you should have only used the signals shown in the highway code. You should have signaled clearly to let others know what you intended to do, particularly if it would help other road users or pedestrians. You should always signal in good time um, and ensure that the signal has been cancelled after the manoeuvre has been completed. You should not beckon to pedestrians to cross the road. That's signals. Okay, and then that is looking into then going on to 15, which we'll come on to in a minute. So let's have a look in the chat room. Let's see what's going on in there. We've got 18 likes. That's good. 16 people watching. 18 likes. Fantastic. And um, can't see until I hope that answers the question. Oh, that's not too busy. Even at James back again. James, good evening to you. Uh, Pass my mod one Monday morning with no faults, zero faults. There we go. It is possible. Nice that. Get zero faults. 
that is a nice bass. Module two next. Module two next. I'm on top form tonight. Top form. Top form. I'm trying to convince those dislikes to like me, you see, Sylvia. It's those dislikes. I'm trying to convert them into likes. Um, so where are we on the sheet? 15 clearance to obstructions. So what's that? Park cars, um, builders, skips, obstructions in the road. And of course, when you're on a Mod 2 test, it's not going to be an empty road, nothing going on. You have to deal with all sorts of things. Uh, clearance to obstructions, then. Um, on the DL25... It is saying clearance to obstructions um, throughout your test. You know, that's the wrong one, Robert. I've got my glasses on as well. 50 clearance to obstructions. You need to give parked vehicles and other obstructions safe clearance when passing. Watch out for changing situations, such as pedestrians walking out from between parked cars, doors opening, vehicles trying to move off. Be prepared to slow down or stop if needed. So bear that in mind, yeah? Um, narrow the gaps, slow the speed. Don't make anybody change speed or direction because of what you're doing. So forward planning. Uh, meeting traffic, that sort of thing. Forward planning, always there on the cautious side. But don't go bulldozing through, putting yourself at risk. Be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear. So narrow the gap, slow the speed. And yeah, don't make anybody slow down or change position because of your actions. Okay, so forward planning, being considerate, and can all uh, aid you with that. James, it's mod to end of March. That's a long way off. James, try and get one earlier. Speak to Charlie. Get one in earlier. Always get cancellations and tests come up. So no day stays the same. Right, response to signs and signals. For me, response to signs and signals is one of the... I'm not saying it's the most important, but signs and signals, response to signs and signals, for me is important they're all important but i sort of look at this when it's quite a juicy one um if you're going about your road ride and you're just so focused on your speed or you're so focused on the examiner behind you um or you're so focused that you're just thinking of um i don't know whatever it might be then you're not going to be identifying all your signs and if you can ride relaxed but focused if you can ride relaxed but safe a road whatever distance you can see you need to be looking for information that's whether it be road signs road markings other road users whatever it might be so you're scanning constantly as well as knowing what's going on behind, so checking your mirrors every now and as well. Now it's a lot, isn't it? But if you're, um, you know, if if you're um, comfortable, um, then you will, you know, that you can do this, um, you know, naturally. So you need to be looking for speed signs. You need to be looking for road signs and information, road markings. If you're missing it, then you're going to have a problem because you're not going to respond to those, and then that's where you get your pick up your faults and stuff like that. I mean, on the 16 responding signs and signals, you've got traffic, line, uh, traffic signs, road markings, traffic lights, traffic controllers, other road users. The description... You must show that you can react correctly to all traffic signs, highway code, um, bus lanes pedestrian crossings, all those sorts of things, some cracking videos down below. Got a cracking video on about bus lanes, got a cracking video about two crosses and things, but you need to, uh, you need a highway code, you need to understand it in order to act safely with it. Um, 
obey signals given by police officers, traffic wardens, highways agency officers and school crossing controls. You need to watch out for signals given by other road users and ride on only when you're satisfied it is safe. So respond to me, responding to signs and signals is a really juicy, juicy subject. Again, bear in mind, you're, if you get three minor faults, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a serious, but it can be. Um, I would think three minor faults are more likely to be as serious or dangerous than not. I think, um, you know, from my experience. Number 17 is use of speed. Yeah, so um, 16 response signs. Make, make sure you're comfortable with your bus lanes. Get a lot of people don't really know what bus, how to rea react to bus lanes. But a lot of people don't know how to react to a flashing amber on a Pelican Crossing. Get a lot of people that don't react to a stop sign junction. So these are the basics. You know, people don't stop at a stop sign. People don't go on a flashing amber on a Pelican. People don't go in a bus lane when they could. And these are all things that could cause you a problem on your test. Uh, Liam, don't rush your mod too. It goes mega quickly anyway. Listen and stay calm. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, my top tip for tonight, mod two, do not over-focus on the following examiner. I've got marked down for anticipation. I have my eyes to focus on my... Just listen to him. Don't be looking for him. Listen to him. Treat him as a sat-nav. If you start focusing on him, you're not focusing on your ride. Uh, my comments typed after Rob mentioned relaxing and not over-focusing on test anxiety. Yep. Uh, signs and signals, two minor faults for me. I needed to look up and not be so tightly focused on the road itself. The road, the speed, your indicators, you know, um, but it's 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 this whole scanning everywhere, isn't it? Scanning everywhere. Um, that's the key. Um, and yeah, so that's good. All good. Um, speed, 17, use of speed. Description, you should have made safe and reasonable progress, keeping in mind road traffic and weather conditions, road signs and speed limits. You need to show confidence based on sound judgment. Remember, at all times, you must be able to stop within the distance. Distance, you can stay, see to be clear, yeah? Now, from my experience, examiners like a brisk ride. They want you up to the limits where possible. But it needs to be safe. You need to be taken into, into account your, your road conditions, your weather conditions. But the examiners do like you where you can to get up to speeds. Now, as an example, if you're in a 30 and you're doing 23, you're going to have to have a really, really good excuse as to why you're doing 23. You might get away with 27 or 28, but 23, no. Um, and, you know, if you've got your 20s, 30s, 40s, and you, you're unsure about what the speed is, they will clock that you've missed the speed sign. You know, you go round out of a 20 into a 30, and you're staying at 20, he knows that you've missed your 30s, and the other way around. They will know if you've missed your speed signs. Kid me not. They do these test routes regularly during the day, but they do like you to get up to speed where it's safe to do so. So do do that. Be confident and be, you know, be aware of traffic conditions and road weather conditions and take all that into account. Um, so use of speed is important, you know. Dual carriageway, central reservation, national speed limit, 70 mile an hour. What have you got? One of those. Where have you got one? You've got one St. Helens. You've certainly got one Macclesfield. So these are, um, these are 70s, you know, so they want to see you get up to those 70s. Um, so, you know, on a test, you could get, um, you could get, what do you get? It's 20 mile an hour, 30, 40, 50, 60, national 70. You get a, Get the whole range of speeds. So do make sure that you're comfortable. Um, 18, following distance. So we've been on you know, about 50 minutes. So yeah, getting through about halfway. Following distance, 18. Um, 
you should have keep you should have kept a safe distance between you and the vehicle in front. Uh, you should have been able to stop safely well within the distance you see the road to be clear. Leave extra distance in wet or slippery conditions. Leave sufficient space when stopped in traffic queues. So on a bike, um, what do we what do we call it? Two second rule and four second rule. Um, if it's a bit iffy, you're not sure. Three seconds, but dry two, rain in four. If it's just in between, maybe three. If it's stopped raining but still a bit wet, maybe three. Um, stopping behind station vehicles at traffic lights junctions. Two car uh, two bike lengths, a couple of bike lengths, and let allow enough room you can get around that vehicle if you can't go. Um, get too close, you can't get around it. Too far back, too big a gap, somebody will get in it. So a couple of bike lengths behind is generally sufficient. And that's number 18. Number 19, maintaining progress. We'll come on to that in a moment. Let's just have another look back in that chat room. Uh, James Castle, I'm really struggling with a specific roundabout, which is quite complex. That doesn't happen to be the check event roundabout in Atherton, does it? Because if it is, we've got a great video on that roundabout on the channel. Um, if there is a particular roundabout that you're struggling with, then speak to your instructor. Yeah, and see if they can help you out. I've got a couple of great videos um, below. I've got roundabouts generally, um, multi-lane. I've got mini roundabouts, and I have got a video on the Checkerbent roundabout. It's got three lanes in Bolton Atherton. So um, the one that generally people say they struggle with is the Magic roundabout in Swindon. Who knows that one? The magic roundabout in Swindon. Um... Uh, Countess Ware and Exit, as um, AW8 said, so Google it. Um, so if you if you put it in Google and then videos, you may find that somebody's videoed it. If somebody's videoed it, have a look at that. You may have already done so. Um, or, you know, if you're going with a bike school, they should have really, if not, can they help you? So, you know, if you're going for your test tomorrow, can they help you with it tomorrow? Um, don't don't leave it because you know what will happen. You might get it. And if you're not happy with it and you go and get it, then you're going to struggle with it, aren't you? So the good thing is, you know about it. You know you're struggling with it. So try and get the answers. That is what I would say. If I was you, that is what I would say. Good evening, Mr. Dean Roberts, Ian Rob Jake Channel. Shame I'm not that far out of the country going to do DAS locally in the summer. Took my CBT end of January and passed theory a fortnight ago. Fantastic. Nearly there then, Dean. You've got uh, Mod 1 and Mod 2 to do. What part of the country are you from? We we attract people coming up. We had somebody last week staying at the local um, Premier Inn. He was from uh, Nottingham. Uh, we get people from South uh, Cambridgeshire. We get people from overseas get people from Scotland, we do get people from all over, um, and uh, yeah, they stay in the local, um, in the local hotels, but anyway, we've all, you know, everybody's situations are different, aren't they, but uh, yeah, where are you from then, James, and uh, good luck with your 
um, route to get in your full license. Glad of you to join in. Any questions, fire them away. Um, get that um, chat room steaming at all four corners. That's the aim. I want the chat room one day to conk out because it overheats. That's my goal, is to get the chat room to overheat. Um, maintaining progress and number 19. There you go. There you go then. So, um, James, Dean, he knows the roundabout. Dean is from Hampshire. Good of you to join us, Dean. So, James, Dean knows that roundabout. What's the chances of that? What is the chances of you saying Countess Roundabout in Exeter and somebody else says they know it because they did their HGB on there? That is called fate. So, Dean, uh, James might ask you one or two questions and you give him the answers and then tomorrow he'll say, do you know what, that did, I'd pass my test. Wouldn't that be a... Eh? I think that's meant to be. Uh, maintaining progress, number 19. Uh, appropriate speed, undue hesitation. So you need to show that you can ride at a realistic speed appropriate to the road and traffic conditions. Again, it's all about reading the road, the weather and so on. Uh, riding to the conditions. You should have approached all hazards at a safe, controlled speed without being too cautious, affecting other road users. You should have always been ready to move away from junctions as soon as it's safe and correct to do so. Riding too slowly can create dangers for yourself and others, and it can. So you do need to get on with it. Be ready, get on with it, but take into account the weather. Weather and road conditions. Number 20, junctions including roundabouts. So your examiner looking to see that you've dealt safely with road junctions, use of OSM PSL procedure, positioning, approach and speed and observations are essential to negotiating junctions and roundabouts safely. Turning right across busy roads, uh, dual carriageways is particularly dangerous. You need to be confident that you can judge your speed and distance for oncoming traffic safety. You need to look at, out for other road users emerging and turning at junctions and be ready to move or stop. You need to be extra watchful in poor light or bad weather conditions for more vulnerable road users such as cyclists and other motorcyclists. So OSM PSL. Um, I've got a great video down if, of OSM PSL at T-junctions and so forth. Be aware though of the new changes. Be aware of the new highway code changes, which is, um, you know, sort of aiming towards those more vulnerable road users, such as um, pedestrians, cyclists, horse riders. So particularly then um, be aware of the highway code ruling at junctions, um, turning into junctions, you know, um, emerging onto junctions. So... You know, pedestrians waiting to cross, this sort of thing. So make sure that you're comfortable. If you're in any doubt, you need to be speaking to your instructors. Um, and, you know, it's um, it's all about, I think, uh, for, for you know, the majority of people, it's now more about getting your speed under control. Getting your speed, approaching these junctions at a controlled speed that you're able to stop and deal with these um, new rules of priority okay so if you've got your speed under control then you're you're anticipating it and you're able then to deal with it safely <coughs> junctions approaching speed observations, turn right, turn left, cutting corners. Um, as soon as the weather improves, I will do a um, video of, um, you know, turning left and right uh, with the new rules that are out now. Um, yeah, so James, how long is a road park? It's about, well, in total, about 40 minutes. Sarah, good evening to you. Got your theory test. Good. 
Yeah. Theory is about 90% of common sense. You are absolutely right, Dean. That's not bad. We've got over 20 people watching. 18 people liked the video. So it's all good. Been at it just about an hour. It's doing well. We are doing very, very well. Yep, we are doing very, very well. And we are on to number 21, which is judgment. Okay, uh, judgment number 21, filtering, overtaking, meeting, crossing. 21, your examiner assesses your judgment skills throughout the test. And... You need to show sound judgment when overtaken. Filtering, meeting or crossing the path of other road users. You should only have done so when safe, legal, making your intentions clear and being sure you understand the intentions of other road users. Um, filtering. So, um, yeah, I mean, we touch on it a little bit. Sometimes getting to the test centre or... <laughs> coming back from the test centre and stuff, we might do a bit of demonstration and stuff, just see how we go. Um, we don't teach it in lessons. Um, in 20 years of teaching, I can only ever recall on a test filtering taking place two times. Um, so it's not something that we um, would encourage you to do um, using your own... Um, decision to do it on test um, maybe if the examiner was to encourage you to do it but as I said in 20 years I think we've had it done twice all right um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that but again speak to your instructor at your local test center it might be something slightly different but that's in my experience um, judgment Overtaking, yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon to get an opportunity for an overtake on a test. Um, dual carriageway, yes, um, but also your, your, your site, you know, your A roads. Um, ultimately, you've got to be safe, haven't you? Is it safe? Is it legal? Are you going to make a benefit? Um, so, on a dual carriageway, um, biggest, I think, feedback I get from trainees that have a experience a problem on overtaking is coming back into the lane too early so they're not allowing sufficient distance once they get past the vehicle so bear that in mind don't cut in too early um you certainly don't want to speed in to overtake so if you can't overtake within the speed limit there's no point doing it that's not legal and getting too close to the vehicle on an overtake so you're getting you're getting too close to it from behind or at the side so remember Give yourself plenty of room all about safety and tip forward planning and safety. But if you do get an opportunity to overtake, fantastic. Safety. All about safety. Um, crossing tra traffic, that's in judgment. I mean, crossing traffic, don't interfere with anybody. Yeah, you get somebody coming towards you, um, you cross in their path. Don't make them change speed. If you're making that vehicle change speed or direction, you are going to have a problem. So make sure it is safe. You might get somebody flash their light for you to cross. Well, if you interpret it correctly and it's safe, use that. Go. Not a problem. Um, 22, position end. Normal riding lane discipline. So normal riding, where we ride normally, round about the centre of your lane. Uh, not the centre of the road. The centre of your lane, position two. But be flexible. We say on, on, a, on a motorcycle at this level, we've got three positions. One, about a metre from the left. Two, in the centre of your lane. Three, about a metre to the left of the centre white line or the centre of the road. Three positions. Whenever you're changing around on those positions, you're going to be 
um, flexible in what you see, road surface, obstructions and so on. But make sure you get sufficient rear observations in before you do so. But it's not uncommon going from position 1 to 2 to 3 to 2 to 1. You, you vary in your position dependent on road surface, road traffic conditions, visibility and so forth. Be flexible. You should have positioned your machine in a safe position. As a general rule, in the centre of your lane, as a general rule, you should have kept clear of parked vehicles, position yourself correctly for the direction that you intend to take. Where lanes are marked, you should have kept to the middle of the lane and avoided straddling lane markings. You should not change lanes when not needed. Be aware of where you are at all times, as other road users judge what you may do based on this yeah your positioning is probably one of the most powerful forms of signaling indicating that you can let people know what you're doing um 23 is pedestrian crossings so what we've got in the description um great video below don't forget the videos below junctions being flexible in your road position that's a great video down below um, you need to identify different types of pedestrian crossings, so Puffin, Toucan, Pelican, Zebra, all of those. Uh, you should have timed your approach to crossings so that you can travel at a speed which should allow you to stop safely. Somebody's waiting or presses the button, lights change. You need to pay particular attention when crossing are obscured by queuing. Sorry. You need to pay particular attention where crossings are obscured by queuing or parked vehicles, yeah, particularly zebra crosses, I think. Um, just in case you can't see somebody starting to cross. So again, it's just getting that speed under control and tip. And being aware and anticipating. That's what I would say there, being aware and anticipating. It's a good word, that anticipating. Um, 25, awareness and planning. Awareness plan, the examiner will have looked to see that you are aware of other road users at all times. You should always think and plan ahead. Absolutely. Um, so you can judge what other road users are going to do. Anticipation. Um, predict how their actions will affect you and react in good time. Anticipate road and traffic conditions. Act in good time. So all about planning, giving yourself time, anticipating. Um, take particular care to consider the actions of other more vulnerable group of road users such as pedestrians and cyclists and the motorcyclists and horse riders and that's where the highway code changes are coming in it's to, to um, you know it's to for, for the sort of responsibility of um, the, the unvulnerable so um, you know looking out paying particular attention for cyclists and pedestrians horse riders that sort of thing the more vulnerable what is considered the more vulnerable road users okay um, that's 25 26 bends bends right hand bend left hand bend approaching at the correct speed um, gear gears and brakes before the bends that's what we encourage position on bends one on the right two on the left one on the right opens up the visibility vision limit point lean in you're away from the center white line left safe zone position two don't want to go over three so position one on a right hand bend position two on a left hand bend try and avoid brakes try and avoid gear changes and the way you're going to do that is by approaching at a um, sensible speed by planning it being able to stop your speed is going to be relative relevant to two things it's going to be relevant to the speed limit of the road but it's going to be more relevant than to the um, you, you, what distance you can see to stop. So always be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear. If you can't, then you're playing it silly. Not need, no need for that. Um, down below we've got things like so that's pretty much the end. We've got a bit on eco, eco safe, which is so you need to be sensible with your throttle your gears. If the examiner can see that you're revving the engine or you know, you're know you in the wrong gear, then that's going to affect your eco-safe riding and how you accelerate up to speeds if you're a bit aggressive and stuff. So eco-safe is important, a little mark there. Um, just think of the environment and think of you know your pocket, especially now with fuel prices increasing. Um, but I've got a couple of videos in the description below which are just worth me mentioning. Um, 
moving off on your test. Um, so I've got great demonstrations that I've done about moving off on your test. Um, you know, control position, observations and stuff like that. Do I need to indicate or not? Um, then I've got a, can I stop on W lines on my test? Because that's a question we're always asked. So watch the video. Can I stop on double yellow lines on my test? All of this explained, I've done a fantastic demonstration and that can help you out. Um, top tips for the perfect hill start. So we've got some hill start video there. Um, road position, be flexible. Um, I've got a video there, how to approach and pass horses. Because we did have somebody um, failed his test for not approaching a horse safely. And when we questioned why, he said, I've never ever, I've never come across a horse on the road. So... Um, you know, depending on what part of the country you're from, I suppose, if you come from the city centre, that could well be an accurate statement. Um, rear obs explained and demonstrate, great one there again, myself on a, on my ST1300, um, rear observations, mirror shoulders, exercise, a bit of a road ride on it. Uh, top tips to cancel your indicators, flexible with your road position, I've got that there twice. How to be flexible with your own position. Ooh, must be good. We've got it in there twice. OSM, PSL Junction. Got me roundabouts. Got two normal roundabouts and mini roundabouts. Videos, demonstrations. Really good. Got a demonstration on the bus lanes. What can happen if I don't use it when I could? And what would happen if I used it when I shouldn't? So all, all the scenarios are there. Um, back to the test centre. Um, we did mention about the independent as well. I get you to pull over and find somewhere. Um, safe pullover and then it asks you to follow the road signs for Bolton or whatever it might be so you carry on doing that day when it ends moving off exercise which you've got on there moving off on your test could be on a gradient could be on a um, uh, yeah on a hill gradient just could be behind a parked car on an obstruction um, or could just be randomly so take a good look at that and you can ask any questions you want um, first and last five minutes of test so not even outside the test centre hardly, find somewhere safe, pull over within the first five minutes and the pupil thinks they failed. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Um, don't worry, nothing. He could get you pulling over. We've known it where he pulls you over at least six times. So we've had people on a module two test come back and say, you know, I've pulled over six times. Nothing to worry about. Um, all he's doing is looking at your moving away, moving in, moving away safely, taking observations and stuff like that. So do not worry if he asks you to pull over. Not a problem. Um, so he's got a lot of videos in there. But once you've I've got it here as well, what happens with my license when I pass? So watch that because you've got a couple of different options. You can do it all yourself or you can hand it to the examiner and he'll send it up for you. But watch that video. It's really, really useful. What happens when I pass my test? Um, and that generally there, that's about it, I think, for mod two. So how did that sound? Let's have another look in the chat room. Because uh, I might be able to watch a bit of Liverpool if I'm not. It's quarter past, about an hour and a quarter. Um, James, my lane arrow less likely issue compared to the incident poor control over there. Uh, Carl, anyone wishing to take a bike lesson to be sure shop around? Because there are some out there that don't have time for your questions all the time. So shop around for a good school. Yeah, I mean, what I'm doing this for, this is um, free, but it's, um, you know, there's a lot of schools that will cover this with you. We cover on your first lesson of Mod 2, we we'll go through all this and help you out and so forth. But, um, you know, all schools um, have different ways of doing it, um, but we use 10 different test centres 10 different test centers we use and we have a good relationship with all of them so that's good in the northwest um aw crossings with traffic lights are all set at three second amber phase before red beware of stale green especially over 40 identified point of no return yep great tuition guidance thank you sylvia i remember lone amber prior to red means stop unless pulling up might cause an accident yep people need to be very very um, 
comfortable with the decisions they're making, the correct decisions. Um, Dave Ashworth, great live chat, enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, Mal, don't overthink it. No, don't. That's all. You know, first five minutes, but relax on a mod two. Um, a lot of people go into a mod two um, that have been driving the roads for twenty years in a car. Well, show the examiner that experience. It's not rocket science. Get on with it. Enjoy it. Show you safe. Job done. Um, but there are really some really, really useful videos in the descriptions below. And, you know, it costs you nothing. It costs you nothing to watch them. So, and this live stream is going to be on the live stream. It's there for eternity. It will be around a lot longer than what I will be around. Um, so, yeah, just a quick reminder, RJH Runcorn opening this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Well, the opening, we opened yesterday. Busy weekend, Sophie, who's the Runcorn manager, busy weekend. Come and say hello if you're in the area, free CBT competition. But it's also the 19th birthday for RJH. So RJH, as a bike school, is 19 years old on the 8th of March. I'm going to try and get a live stream. Well, I've, I've set a live stream for the 8th of March, 8 o'clock, 8th of March, live stream. Set those reminders. I'm going to try and get um, my first ever CBT pupils to join me on the live stream, Karen and Marie. Uh, I'm going to try and get in touch with them and ask them if they want to come along, join me on my live stream, my first ever CBT pupils from 8th of March, 2003. So that would be something special, wouldn't it? Um, so that's where we are now. Um, it's been a good evening. Uh, thanks very much, all of you, for joining in. It's much appreciated. And um, I will see you on Sunday night anyway. Um, but, yeah, um, good luck for those of you that have got tests tomorrow and the remainder of the week. Keep me posted. And... Um, have a very pleasant evening. And don't like going when I've got so many people watching. Um, and, you know, I will see you all on Sunday. Unless there's any more questions. Happy birthday, yeah. 8th of March. Happy birthday, 19. I've got a video scheduled, so get that reminder on. Anybody wants to come and say hello and run corn? At the weekend, we will be there. It's a good one. I told you it'd be a good one. Just hoping for some nice weather. Hoping for some nice weather. So I am getting uh, ready now. So I will catch you all soon. Thanks for your support, everybody. Bye for now.